In the last video, we looked at the periodic table and its arrangement relative to levels, sublevels, and orbitals for electrons. That turns into an orbital diagram using three rules, the Aufbau principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and Hund's rule. It allows us to show where the electrons are, how many are in each place, and filling from lowest to highest. So with this periodic table, I pointed out the different sections, the S, the P, the D, and the F block. One thing I wanted to point out that wasn't there in the last video, but it is on the document you have, is this right there. As I go across a row, I know which levels and sublevels I have based upon where there are elements on the periodic table. The first energy level only has S sublevels because there's only an or element there. The second row, therefore the second level, has the S and the P section. The third row has the S and the P section. And you'll see that down here where I put them together and I put a slightly larger gap between one row and the next. So row four is where we have the 4S. We finish level three with the 3D, row five, and then here, row six is the reminder that we go 6S, we jump down to the F block, back up to the D block, and continue with the P electrons or the P block. So if you've done these before, you remember that kind of weird order. If you haven't, it's important to get enough practice that this really becomes ingrained. So there's lots and lots of videos out there. This one's not gonna go into every possible detail on this, but there's lots of videos that explain this and practice this. So take advantage of the time at home to look at those, but also be asking questions whenever you have them. When we transition from an orbital diagram to an electron configuration, we're doing so to shorten our notation. In doing that, it shows us a little bit less information, but much more efficiently. So for phosphorus, the orbital diagram would look like that but the electron configuration is a condensed version. We don't show each individual electron and orbital. We just show the sublevels that are there and how many are in there. So 1S has two arrows, the 2S has two arrows, the entire 2P sublevel with its three orbitals held six, 3S2, 3P3. It's much more common on um, free response questions that you would be asked to write electron configurations rather than orbital diagrams. But one thing that we do lose is looking at or understanding how many electrons are paired or unpaired within sublevels or how many sublevels are partially filled. That is important in terms of some of the magnetic properties, as I mentioned, but it is also important as we start to understand some other properties that have to do with those electron repulsions. Because when we do fill sublevels and orbitals with more electrons, we do that because of the greater attraction from the nucleus, but it also increases our repulsion. So there are some exceptions to electron configurations, exceptions to patterns of ionization energy, and exceptions or explanations that come from knowing that. So when you go to this version, it is important that you're able to connect that to and kind of envision the P is three lines or three boxes. And with only three, we have put one in each. If you're ever asked about paired or unpaired electrons, you're gonna be focusing on that last sublevel for the most part to see which ones aren't paired. So the 1S, the 2S, the first few levels will fill completely it's going to be that last sublevel, and with some exceptions, sometimes the last two sublevels that we is important that we check or double check. So in the practice problems, there's just some of the same basic ones from previous, some longer ones, so we can get used to that order. But the last one here, chromium, is an exception to the Aufbau principle. So it is important that you check in on that video and see that. You won't have to memorize every element that's an exception. There's something like 10 to 12 on the periodic table in total, but you will have to be able to recognize that an exception exists if they show it to you and talk about why that happens. And that's coming back to applying these rules while thinking about the orbital diagram.